just uh, moved the tire out, pulled out the well, those doors. Oh, here by the bead breaker, grab my uh, grab my spoons, uh, my water thing. Uh, I use a sprayer. Maybe put I don't know uh, half a dozen, four or five tablespoons of dish soap in it, enough to make it suds. Um, comes in pretty handy. Okay, I've already pulled the Schrader out. The big question of the year. Exactly who is this Mr. Schrader? That's not him, but that's something that he invented. I'd like to thank him for that. That's a that's a Schrader. Schrader well. You can see that? Can you see that? That's a Schrader. That that comes out with that's underneath your valve cap if you ever wondered. These uh this is a little tool that I have. I've had this thing my whole life. I think I bought it when I was like twelve years old for a bicycle. For like a quarter. <laughs> but anyway, that's got a lot of use on it. Um, but you can get actually get valve stems, valve caps like this one right here, that pull apart and have got that remover tool, okay? And that little guy right there, that little Schrader's got a top on it. You just stick her down inside of the valve stem and like that right there, look up, and unscrew it, okay? You unscrew it and it'll go. It's got a bunch of air behind it. There's the valve stem right there, all right? But that valve stem is not related to Mr. Schrader. Who is Mr. Schrader? All right, so now, I think I've showed you guys this before, but I'll show you again. And I'll try to do this, I'll try to do this one hand. I, I try to keep things um, sort of in order and work off from my pad there. See that, the old couch cushion? That's the old couch cushion. When I picked up off the side of the road, <laughs> Nothing like a good couch cushion. And I do that to protect my wheels, okay? When you when I flip this over, well, I'll show you. Here, I'll do it right now. Watch this. Watch this. You see that brake rotor right there? Those are expensive, and they're a pain in the neck to swap, and yada da yada da. So I like to protect mine, and I do that with this cushion. And watch this. Watch this. All I got to do. Now, see, you hear that little tink? You don't want to get too much of that going on. All right, yeah. Use it, just leave it on the cushion, just like that. Put that like that right there. See that right there? Now, this little bead breaker cost me all of $12. Now, I used to use C-clamp, 16-inch vice grips, which I always carry with me on the bike. I, I've knocked these things off with 2x4s, driving cars on 2x4s. I mean, they, I can't tell you how many different ways I... Um, with this little $15 bead breaker from Harbor Freight, watch this. You'll be impressed, I think. Maybe not. <laughs> you don't want to get against the rim with it. You just kind of set her up like that and press down. Put a little bit of pressure on it. A little more pressure. You know, you can, you can, kind, of, you can kind of like, you got, if you're mad at somebody, you can scream at it. Oh, it's you, Bob! Yeah. Bill! Sam! Join! Sam! There you go. I wouldn't advise screaming your wife's name when you're doing it. Women are sensitive. Women are more sensitive about you be working out in your front yard, screaming your name while you're trying to break out. Oh, trying to break the right there. See, see, just going out like that right there. Look at, look at, look at, look at. I could probably do that with my foot and snap there. Yeah. Well, you just break it loose like that around there. Like that. Okay. Now see how I protected my, see how I protected my, my uh, what's my wheel from it? Now I'll just flip it over and do the other side. Okay. Watch this. Watch this. Just like that, right there. Now watch. Now watch. You gotta keep it away from just move away from it. Move it away from the rim. Kinda work it, kinda work it. So that little arm on that on that bead breaker goes, watch this. Goes like that. Okay, now watch. Now we gotta move this out just a little bit. Wait there. There we go. Like that. Not that part. Not that part. You baby it'll work. We can try it. <laughs> Gotta go in a little bit farther. Just a little bit farther. Not, I want to. I want to actually hang on to this tire. I think because this tire is this not a bad old tire. Probably give another. That was bad. I was looking at this tire that I'm taking off. I ain't got that in there. Did you hear it go? Here we go. That bead is broken. Mr. Schrader will be proud of us. There we are. Not to do it. Um. So I got. Uh, what was I going to tell you about? But I can't remember now. All right, now I like to work. 
you know, if you're working on a dual rotor, you just leave the thing right on, right on the pad like that. Um, but if not, I like to use a rotor. That you got some dirt on here. That's grease when you. And this is not important right now, okay? But when we're all done, when you're all done, you take carburetor cleaner and a rag or a brake cleaner and clean that baby up. You don't want any grease or any sign of dirt on there at all. You guys probably already know that. But at this point in the game, it doesn't really matter because we're going to get dirty. We're going we're gonna to get dirty before this, before this is over with. We're going to get dirty. You are warned. All right. So now, now that you can do, watch this. Now, again, you got to remember, I'm working one-handed, all right? <laughs> watch this. You don't have to use this stuff. I only use I only use it for for dismantling. I got some other tricky stuff that I borrowed from Walmart. Some guys at Walmart take good care of me. They gave me some of that lube, tire lube stuff free. All right, so now watch us. Now watch. All right, so you take one of these guys like this right here. See that? See that little the short one? I like these little ones. What is that? Maybe eight inches. And what you do is you push down on one side of the tire to get this side, the side opposite of the tool that you're going to move with. You want to force that down into the center of the wheel because there's a there's a low spot there. Right. And you just get underneath there like that right there. And look at it. And you just go like that. I see that? See how I pulled that up? That's tucked down into the center of the wheel. This is pulled out and tucked underneath the rotor. Okay, now you use a long one. Now watch this. Watch, watch, watch what I'm doing. You want to do this kind of carefully. You don't want to scratch the wheel all up real bad. But after you've done a couple of them, it's, it's really not that big. See that? And you just pop like that right there. Watch, you want to see me do what? Watch this. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. I'll show you, watch. Look that. You see that? You see how I did that? Watch, watch, watch. Let me do another one. Watch this, watch this one. This one's a really good one because. Because this tire is ready to come right off here. I'm going to jump right off of this. Oh, man, you didn't catch it. I had the camera in my hand. But look at this. Look at this, man. It's just so easy. It just takes just a second. Oh, I'm using the... Using the <laughs> I, remember, I remember one time years ago, I told a friend of mine, we always had... Tire changing contest with our dirt bikes. <laughs> These were two tires. I don't know if you guys are dirt riders or not, but with bead locks, or the the like my KX500 had two or three bead locks in it. I mean they're a pain because it's like the rim locks. Excuse me. Um, they it's a T-shaped thing that goes inside of the wheel and pulls down on the bead to keep it in spot. So if you get a flat tire, the tire will stay right on. You just keep right on riding, racing. You can win races like that. All right, so, but the problem with them is, is, wow, are they a pain in the neck? Tube tires ain't too bad as long as you don't have rim locks, bead locks, whatever you want to call them. But, but we used to have races, and a friend of mine and I, we run pretty close. We could do, we could do a tire in about six minutes with, with, with rim locks, no joke. I mean, we, we did so many of them. I can't even tell you how many. Good night. Was I young and stupid? But anyway, um, um, so so I kind of don't I kind of don't really like get too excited about this stuff. All right. So now with this, now what you do is the same thing here. Yeah, probably ought to grab my hand. One of the things that I got working against me right now, which and it's not that big of a deal, but what is a good idea always when you're doing tires like this? You lay the stuff out in the sun. Then it's nighttime, okay? I mean, it's getting pretty late. But if you lay the stuff out in the sun, especially the new tire, like that brand new Shinko that I'm going to put on this thing, you lay that out there, and they just get real pliable. You can just about snap the things off with your hand, with a bare hand. Not quite, but pretty close. But this is going to be a little more difficult, all right? But I'll show you how, I'll show you how to work a tire. All right, just... Just so you know, okay. What you do is you take 
your long one, 12, 18 inches, whatever that thing is, you take that puppy, now that's it. Now, the, the one side is already off, the side of the rim, okay? And you, you work this up underneath here and get it to get the inside one. See this right here that I got going? See that? You get that to and, and out into that outside. You don't want to get onto your you don't want to get onto your rotor like that. You want to keep pull back just a little bit here, Scott. There we go, like that. See? All right. Now, just like a bicycle tire. Watch this. You see that? This is what you have. Now, what you're gonna do? I can't. I only got two, two hands, but I'm gonna take a shot at this thing for you. What you wanna do is you wanna, is you wanna press down really hard on that. See that? And then smack it. I'll hold this down a little bit. It's too bad that something here. You just wanna smack it right here with a little mallet. Okay? Right there. You wanna smack it right there. You can use a you can use a five pound beater and sledgehammer if you want to. I've done that before. But, but if you hit a rim, you're done. It's, it's over. And you just smack a couple times like this. Now, what's going to happen, what's going to happen, is while you're smacking, you're pressing down. Now, let me show you this. Just that little tiny bit of wrapping. How far out have already increased this? Look at it. See that? Right. Now, what you want to do is you want to aim this thing onto your cushion. Ain't that something? What a little nothing throwaway cushion, how handy it can be. Man, I I used to have stacks of them, but I give them away to people that I've sold lights to or whatever. Alright, now hold on. Alright, now, now we're just gonna just do a little more smack and this thing is gonna come right out of there. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. It is out. It is out. It's out. And it's done. This thing is over. This tiny is over. Yep, 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 yep. Some more? Look at here. Look what I got now. Yeah? Not good. Not good. It takes two minutes. You literally, you literally can do this on the side of the road. I have four numbers. <laughs> Did I hit you? Did I hit you? I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. There's the result. I really, I really didn't mean to scare you there. Right. Well, you know, as I'm working on this, on this Kenda, I'm realizing how good of an idea it was to do this, because that tiger's feathered. I don't know if you can see it. Can you see that against the siding of my house? It's feathered. <laughs> Pretty good. Look at this right here. See how it's feathered? That, that makes them sing. And it also makes, it's also the sign of wear. She may have another, now she's got 3,000. It may have another 1,500, 2,000 miles. Not even close. It's a desert. So, anyway, there you go. It's off. It's off. Okay. Yeah, not too much cleanup to do because it's not been that long since I had that tire on there. It was just last month. Man, it was just last month I put that tire on there. Anyway, we'll get, I'll get back with you. We'll get things. Might be tomorrow. Because it's getting kind of late, getting kind of dark, getting kind of hungry, kind of tired. Oh, hey, Bill, you were asking about you're doing your slave uh, slave cylinder on your bike. It's back in here. This is a forward gear, middle bevel gear, forward bevel gear, whatever you want to call it. Right there. You see that right there? That's the the slave is slave cylinder for the clutches right in behind there, right back in there. And if memory serves me correctly, you don't have to take the stator off, the stator cover. That stator's inside there, okay? You don't have to fool with that. But you gotta take this middle gear cover off. See this right here? Take those, those, da, 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 da. You gotta take your shifter off. Da, 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 da. Um, and I think, I think that you can get the, if I recall, I think you can get the uh, slave out just a couple bolts on the slave and out she comes. Alright? So to replace that, it's not that big of a deal. Maybe an hour or two or three or four or five or six to me how many bridges you lose and all that kind of stuff. Alright? Da da da! <sighs> I'm tired, hungry. It's been a long day. She's looking pretty good. 
Got, like I say, and I got new plugs, man. Got new oil, brand new oil chain, new front tire, new front brakes, balanced. Um, let me see, what else did we do today? Uh, oh, got the back end all tore apart. <laughs> oh, and we fixed that. We fixed that. We played with, uh, we played with that. What did I do with that thing? Oh, we played with that. Remember that thing? Maggie. There's our repair job on this diaphragm. We put some stuff on there. We're going to try that out. See how that works. All right. Been quite a day. See you all in a bit.